Lecture 7 a we are going to look at the basic steps in speech making, skills and competencies in public speaking, ethics in public speaking. So let us start by actually defining public speaking training. Why is it important to you? Why is it important? Why should you learn about public speaking in school? Well, orality, that is face-to-face -face oral communication is important to social life. How is it important? Times of crisis and need. People need to talk. Uh, people talk to each other directly so that they can make decisions. For example, there is a fire. Somebody has got to stand up in public and mobilize the people. For example, you want to build a school. Somebody has got to stand up and make that claim. Then somebody who is in court, there is something that has to be uh, decided. Who's on the right, who's on the wrong. So public speaking is very important. If you want to be a good citizen, if you want to be involved in your country, Kenya, you've got to learn, practice, and develop great public speaking skills. Because that's going to help you to form relationships. It's going to help you to become a good member of the society because you're going to be able to get involved. Both personal, collective goals are achieved through public talk. This is the year of the election 2022. You want to be an MCA, my student? then you have to be able to be a good public speaker. That's personal. Collective goals, you want to mobilize the, uh, the public to go vote for you. You want to mobilize the public to build uh, something in your community, like, for example, a school, or you want to build even something as simple as one classroom. Then that's collective goals. You've got to be able to speak confidently and convince the public. So public speaking is a great asset for you. Classroom, workplace, community, you need to learn about it. And this lesson is out to do that. What is it out to do? It's out to provide you with the basic steps involved in the speech preparation and speech making processes to help you develop a rhetorical frame of mind. Listen to this again. Rhetorical frame of mind. What is that? A mindset geared towards the preparation, practice, and presentation of the speech. Unfortunate very many political leaders even other leaders they stand up in public and they don't have a rhetorical frame of mind and what happens they get into trouble they say something stupid they say something that is actually uh, for example that's going to create uh, tension they might even actually abuse others they don't have that aspect of developing a rhetorical frame of mind i want you to mark that as you go out in the world before you even address any public develop that rhetorical frame of mind. Speech making is not an easy thing. You're going to change lives and you can ruin them or you can actually make them the better. What are the basic steps? Seven of them. Selecting the subject, narrowing that subject, determining the purpose. You've got to do an audience analysis. Who are you going to talk to? Then when you do that, they don't want to listen to an empty head. You've got to gather materials, do research, organize your speech and rehearse it. Can you see why our political leaders are in trouble? They don't do this. They don't go through these processes. They go out there and they actually create tension. They actually divide people, which is a sad thing. Selecting the subject, topic selection, that actually what kind of topic you have determines what kind of speech you got. Do you know that topic? Is that topic uh, knowledgeable to you? That's one. Another one, does it interest you? Is that topic of interest to you? One way to zero in on a topic of great interest to you it is, is to explore topics from your own personal life, activities, hobbies, experience, okay? Thirdly, that topic should also interest your audience. I mean, you're not talking to yourself. Many people in public speaking, they actually address themselves. They even laugh at their own jokes. And uh, the audience is wondering, hi, yeah, what's wrong with this guy? So anyway, many interest, many topics interest audiences, like about their health something that touches on their happiness, their security. Or maybe you're offering a solution to a recognized problem. You want to tell people easy remedy for COVID. That should interest your, co uh, your audience. And uh, controversial topics you want to talk about. Lastly, social significance. Your topic should have a social, uh, some social relevance for the lives of your audience members. Then that will interest your audience. I mean, we are all creatures of emotion. We are all bound by the same things. So that should actually the four consider those four when selecting a topic 
Secondly, narrowing the subject. A general subject will be of little value until it is narrowed down to a manageable level. You cannot talk about Taita Taveta University in the time allocated for class. So, three factors that you need to think about when you are actually narrowing the subject. One, the time limit. How much time do you have? Even when you go out there, you have to ask those who have called you to do a public speech or a public presentation. How many minutes? 15, 10? In our class, 4 to 6 minutes. So you have to say, maybe you have to say, I'm not going to talk about Taita Taveta University in general. I'm going to talk about the catering department. I'm going to talk about my department. I'm going to talk about the student welfare department. The second aspect you get to consider, meet specification of audience. What do the audience want to know? They might not want to know all about Taita Taveta University. Maybe mainly about student welfare. Or how can they register easily? How can they maneuver in Taita Taveta University? Thirdly, comprehension level of the audience. Get your subject to the comprehension level of the audience. If you want to talk about uh, rocket science to your classmates, you're not going to go to the science. But if you're going to talk to rocket scientists themselves, then you can you know, have uh, the, the time or you can narrow it to a place where they can even understand the formulas. But if you're talking to your classmates, they are bones. Okay? So if you're going to talk to kindergarten kids, maybe you'll just, just show them pictures of a rocket. You're not going to talk about the science per se. Number three, determining the purpose. Every activity has a purpose or goal. Why do you wish to discuss this subject? Why might an audience want to listen to you? Why is this topic appropriate to this occasion? So there are two purposes, two main purposes. The general purpose, do you want to inform them or do you want to persuade? Persuade goes beyond informing. You want them to take some action. And a, specific purpose, a specific purpose focuses audience attention on a particular substantive goal of your presentation. For example, I want my audience to understand why interest in women's soccer has grown in Kenya. That's usually called the central idea in your informative speech. In your persuasive speech, it's called a claim. I want to express a claim because you're persuading somebody. I want to claim that this soap is better than this bar soap. All right? Analyzing the audience and location is the other step. You've got to know your audience. You're not going to talk to trees. You're not going to talk to lions or animals. What is your audience? Are they young and the restless? Are they old? Are they male and female? Are they professors? Are they the lay? you got to actually analyze. And this is very, very important because public speaking is really to actually uh, persuade the audience or it's to move the audience. And you want to ask yourself, how would I feel about this topic if I were in their place? How can I adapt this material to their interests and habits? So that's why you need to know what's the audience knowledge of and attitude towards you. What is the audience knowledge and attitude towards your topic? All those are questions that you have to ask. Audience analysis, you do it through demographics, psychographics, desires, uh, what are some of their beliefs, values, and so on. You go to number five, gathering the speech material. Once you have analyzed the audience and context of the speech, you are ready to assemble ideas and information to support your central idea. You need to do these things. You can go through them. But one, you need to do reflect on what you already know. Figure out what is relevant to your central idea or claim. So you have that skeleton. Now you go out in the library, get material to fill it. All right? You want to support your claim. You are claiming that this... Soap is better than soap B. So what makes soap A better? Get the material to support it. Make a claim, back it up. Many people talk about, uh, especially political leaders in Kenya, they'll stand up, talk about something, but it is unsubstantiated. That's why they're easily sued. So you have to have the material. You have to do your research, and you have to start now. If you're going to be a politician uh, who's crooked, like the way we see, then you don't need to have gathering material. You don't need to support your material, but you'll be landing in jail or in uh, cells most of the time because people are becoming more knowledgeable. So gather material, do research. And a well-researched topic really is interesting to listen at. If you're talking about diabetes and you're talking about one of the causes of diabetes, according to Dr. Maboringe, is sedentary lifestyle. If you actually don't so, uh, exercise. If you actually walk, uh, don't walk. If you are doing using the car all the time, you've supported it. So we know. Oh, you just don't come out and say one of the uh, problems about or uh, one of the causes of diabetes is just that you are lazy. You don't do anything. Who has said it? Where's the proof?
Developing the speech outline, you don't go out there and just bubble deck. You don't go out there and just wing it. You've got to have an outline. You've got to have your ideas logically arranged. So once you've compiled your materials, you have to develop a preliminary outline of your main ideas to help you sort them out. You know, our minds perceive things logically, like in chronological order. First, second, third. He went, then he went here, then he went there. Left, right, center. You just don't go, yeah, they went, they started, they came back, then they were rolling around. You've got people who actually talk like that, don't you? But you come out not getting anything. They don't have a speech outline. Okay, I don't mean every time you go out there, you talk to somebody, you get to have a speech outline. But it's important when you're going to give out a speech, have your ideas logically arranged. An outline does the following, illustrates how your various materials relate to your central idea or claim. Remember, you are backing up your central idea. Show where you have plenty or too little material so that you actually have every idea backed up, not one, the first one only, right? Clarifies the structure of your speech, right? So read more about developing the speech outline. You follow these three rules, arrange the ideas, main ideas in a clear systematic order, arrange the sub points under each main idea, preserve the unity of the speech by making sure that each point is directly related to your specific purpose. So don't bring something that's out there. If you want to make sure it relates to backing up my central idea or my claim, rehearsing, rehearsing. Have you ever wondered why we like to watch Nelson Mandela or Barack Hussein Obama give a speech? Serena Williams plays tennis fantastically well. David Rudisha can run 800 like a wind. Ronaldinho or Ronaldo, they do their thing. Plays football and makes it look so easy. You know why they do that? How do they do it? Practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Why don't we like to listen to our political leaders? They, they, they are poor in public speaking because they have not practiced. They think actually talking is the same as communication. No. Communication is a process. It's a whole ball game and you need to practice. It's a skill. So similarly, when you watch a truly effective extemporaneous speaker, the speech comes out so smoothly that it seems almost effortlessly. So what are we going to do? You have to rehearse your speech. Don't cram it. There are four methods of speech presentation. One, impromptu, delivered on the spur of the moment. Many political leaders in Kenya do that. Memorize, written out, word for word, committed to memory. That might be a bit tricky. If you forget one line, you might completely be disoriented. Reading, the speaker reads from a manuscript. That can be important, especially if the point is very crucial, especially in court. Or even when the president is making a speech, he cannot just play around. He's got to read because... It's low in some cases. But the best, and the one that is used by great speakers, is extemporaneous. Extemporaneous. Delivering the actual speech from a few notes. You've seen Obama do that. Uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy used to do that. Uh, Mandela does that, or used to do that. You have Wangari, Muta Mathai. You just have your few notes. You know your speech inside out. You've rehearsed it severally. So it's <laughs> Okay, so what are the skills and competence needed by public speakers? You must possess some competence or skills. There are five, integrity, knowledge, rhetorical sensitivity, oral skills, self-confidence. Let's look at each in turn, all right? Integrity. What's integrity? Integrity is your reputation for reliability, truthfulness, concern for others. Are you being truthful? Okay. Many incumbent members of parliament in Kenya were voted out during the 2007 election because they were perceived by voters as lacking integrity. I think the same will happen in 2022. If you have no integrity, if you keep lying, then your time is coming. Do they say the days of a thief are 40? I don't know about the days of a political thief. I don't know. Knowledge. It's usually painful experience to sit and listen to a bonzo somebody who has no knowledge an individual who is a bonzo uh, let me explain uh, i grew up in mombasa i grew up around buxton area and we used to like to go to the beach when you go to the beach there's a guy you'll always find there he used to be called a bonzo because he has no knowledge he reads he doesn't read but he behaves as if he knows everything this is an individual who has little knowledge but loves to make repetitive speeches in public places such as markets, 
bucket bus stops and garden squares in Mombasa. You go to Mombasa, you'll find a lot of bonzos. They keep talking everything. Najua bana, najua, najua. And they have read nothing. So I want to urge you, my dear student, knowledge, knowledge. Read, read, read. That's the only way you can make great speeches. What's the female counterpart? It's called a bonobo. Beauty, no brains. These are beauty queens who often mesmerize their audiences with their looks more than the content of their speech. And they are plenty in Kenya. I don't know, they are referred to socialite or something. Make sure you actually be able to analyze somebody's speech. What's the message? How have they put it together? Are they knowledgeable in that subject? Are they guessing? Are they mesmerizing you with their looks? Then the third aspect is rhetorical sensitivity. Rhetorical sensitivity. Remember, communication comes from the root word rhetoric. I know it's used very loosely. Don't give me that rhetoric. But it's because they are lay. Lay people do not know that the word rhetoric is more than just being empty words. Rhetoric is very important. Rhetoric is the art of persuasion. Anyway, what is rhetorical sensitivity? This refers to the degree to which speakers recognize that all people are different and complex and hence must be considered individually. Right? So, remember, we are getting... Oh, maybe we're already in a global world or global village. We are interconnected. The fourth industrial revolution, you have to be thinking beyond your ethnic group. When you address an audience, think about their males, females, old, young, uh, white, blue, green, Chinese, Americans. That's what it's all about. In any speech-making occasion, it's imperative that you be sensitive and appreciate the different segments that make up your audience. All right? And then we have uh, oral skills. Many effective public speakers like Obama seem to be merely conversing with their listeners. They develop a sense of conversationality with their audience. They develop a sense of conversationality with their audience. There's no need about public speaking. You go to theatrics. You don't have to shout. I don't understand. You've got a microphone. Why, have you, why do you have to shout? You just have to develop a sense of conversationality you'll find that also with preachers they have to shout get it from me oral skills it doesn't mean you're more effective when you're shouting it just means you want to just make noise in some cases so understand good public speakers have great oral skills they just develop a sense of conversationality Yes, I had just went out there, I went to Ohio, and Ohio, I saw this lady called Jen. Jen has no social security. Jen is a single mother. Jen is actually dealing with issues of unemployment. You just I went there! What? You don't got to do that. You don't have to. Self-confidence. I've been teaching and practicing the art of public speaking for many years and have never managed to totally eliminate speech anxiety. I believe it can never be totally eliminated, but it can be controlled. What's the secret to minimizing speech apprehension? Is preparation and practice. Confidence comes from, I'm well prepared. I know this topic. I am good to go. Hey, I know this topic. You wake me up anytime. That's how self-confidence is built. Unless you're prepared, you'll go out there and you'll just be telling yourself, hey, I'm just going to fail it. Hey, I'm going to blunder. But self-confidence is built by saying, I know this topic. I can actually read it backwards. I have actually got it on my fingertips. That's what self-confidence is all about. And the more you go out there, the more you do public speaking. When you are called to class, answer a question. You don't wake up one morning and voila, you have confidence. It's built over time. Ethics in public speaking. Public speakers are in a unique position not only to share their ideas but also to persuade their listeners and times move them to act for better or for worse. You have to check on our political leaders. Are they manipulating? Are they actually ethical? Huh? With this unique power to influence the minds and hearts of others comes responsibility. That's the heart of ethics. Simply stated, ethics refers to the standard of behavior that tells how human beings ought to act in the many situations in which they find themselves as friends, parents, children, citizens, politicians, business people, professionals, and so on. So while we look at politicians, you also have to say, when you stand up and you are addressing uh, a public, what's your ethics? Are you cheating? 
Are you cutting corners? Are you be, ha, giving half truths? Are you actually manipulating the audience? This is what you need also to check. It's 2022. This is the election year. There's a lot of half truths there. There's a lot of unethical uh, behavior and talk going out there. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Let those half ears listen. Right? And there's the field of ethics, what it says. I'm going to rush on this. Earth. So ethics comes from the word ethos. Okay? And the word ethos is meaning character. Does that person have character? Aristotle, according to Aristotle, a person who has ethos demonstrated while speaking that he or she shared characteristics with others in the community. That is, had three things. Good sense, goodwill, good morals. What's good sense? To speak knowledgeably. I want you to look at people. Are they speaking knowledgeably? Especially the political candidates for uh, 2022. Are they speaking knowledgeably? Do they know what they're talking about? There are very many people standing up Okay, they are trying to actually get votes. And they just don't even know their constituents. They don't even know their people. They don't even know the laws. Even MCAs, you're supposed to go out there and make laws. They have no knowledge. So look at that. To communicate a sense of caring for oneself and the audience. To share your audience's visions and hopes. That's what Aristotle is talking about. More ethos. Speakers were regarded honestly and positively only when they were well prepared, honest and respectful towards the audience. Look at that. Do you think... They are well prepared, especially the political leaders, have a solid grasp of the subject, display sound reasoning, are honest and unmanipulative, are genuinely interested in the welfare of the listeners. Listeners tend to distrust speakers who deviate even slightly from these qualities. Have you been cheated once, twice by political leaders? Are you going to vote them back in? Do you want to actually be cheated for the next five years? Is it the 500 shillings that will only get you to vote for them? Think think my dear student as a public speaker you'll face ethical issues at every stage of the speech making process from the initial decision to speak through the final presentation of the message so what do you need to consider this is whether you're in classroom courtroom wherever you are ethos is a multifaceted idea reflecting what people know care about users guidelines for living what makes individuals People with ethos is their public demonstrations of knowing, understanding what their community held as important. In other words, their shared commitments and living out those commitments. Are your leaders really caring about you? Do they share your struggles? If they are driving in big aeroplane like cars and coming to address you in your meetings, is there something not adding up? If they're living in Nairobi and they're representing you in Igambangombe or in Mlechi or in deep in Taita Hills, are they really sharing with you their values, their beliefs, or it's just their self-interest? These are things you need to really think when it comes to uh, public speaking. We'll finish with the skyhook principle. Therefore, to be a successful public speaker, you must find some moral frame you share with your listeners if you are going to convince them that you have their best interest at heart. All right? Moral frames are personal, social, political, economic, philosophical, and so on. In most instances, you'll come across a multicultural audience with some segments whose values conflict with yours. How do you persuade people whose value conflict with yours to look to work with you? It's unfortunate, very embarrassing to see our National Assembly behave like goons or behave like uh, people who have not gone to school because it's really a shame to see people fighting. And uh, this is what we advised in public speaking. Aristotle talked about the skyhook principle. You need to apply what Makero talks about, the skyhook principle. What is the skyhook principle? The skyhook principle is a higher value a higher appeal that transcends your difference. You don't have to fight. Look at the shame. People are fighting. They are pulling masks. They are throwing uh, water bottles. What? Lowering of standards. It's really a total shame. Fathers and uh, even some are grandfathers and their kids are looking and they are seeing in our National Assembly they are playing like kids. They are actually goons, so to speak. It was not different like where you find touts in Void Town actually gambling and asking for or trying to get uh, to get uh, 
passengers. It's really a shame. All right, I want us to finish uh, here with uh, an exercise which you are going to do. This is a scale for measuring ethos. I want you to measure ethos of the presidential candidate. We have four of them. I've chosen Stephen Kalonzo Msioka. I've looked at Wycliffe Msali Amudabadi. I've also looked at William Samoy Ruto and Raila Amolo Odinga. So what are you going to do? You've got to copy this. You can print it. All right. I will put it on Word and print it. It's very straightforward. It says, please indicate your impression of the political figure noted below by circling the appropriate number between the pairs of adjectives below. The closer the number is to an adjective, the more certain you are of your evaluation. Number one and seven indicate a very strong feeling. What strong feeling? For example, let's see. Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka. If I think he's intelligent or he's very, very intelligent, I'll put a one. If I think he's not intelligent, and intelligent totally, I don't want to call him names, then you put a seven. So that is very, very strongly feel, all right? You only indicate one number. You cannot indicate one and seven. No, he's either very, very intelligent or he's very, very unintelligent, okay? Number two, six, and six indicate a strong feeling, all right? So it's not as strong as one and two. So you can say, He's intelligent. Yeah, he's, he's, he's intelligent. Okay. Number six, he's not, not, not very unintelligent. Number three and five are weak. It's like, well, yeah, somehow intelligent. If you put number three, somehow intelligent. Somehow intelligent. Number four, so number five, somehow not intelligent. Number four is neutral. Number four is neutral. So see, seven strong on unintelligent. Very strong on intelligent. One, very strong and on intelligent. Okay, let's go to the second one. Trained seven and trained. If you think Kalonzo Mshoka is very well trained, very very well. Uh, no, very well uh, is very very un untrained. Remember this one is untrained, all right? So if you think he's very untrained, you put a one. If you think he's very very trained, put a seven. So make sure you keep checking. They are actually not the same. It's not that doesn't mean seven all the time is the opposite. No, they keep changing. So, read carefully. Do not discuss this. I want to get a good view. It's actually a research I want to carry out and see uh, whether we can actually get a feeling. We want to see why are university student or the youth not interested in politics? Because you might not be interested in politics, but politics is usually interested in you, and we have to find a way to how to interest you. So, I want you to send it through email. Send it through email because you might not be able to circle, but you can underline. You can underline. You bold the letter and underline it. I hope that makes sense. Bold the letter, underline it because you go to when you go to Word, it has the function where you can bold and underline. I don't know that it has a, a function where you can circle, but bold and underline. Right? Feel free to ask questions. You'll do the same for those. All right. You can have them back to back or you can even, this is just one page basically. It's an A4. So you can just keep them the way they are. And send this through email, mwangawako at gmail.com. Underline bold the letter that you think as you go along. If you think William Samoy Ruto is intelligent, then or very intelligent for that matter, you actually bold one and you can underline it. If you think he's intelligent, you can put two. If you think somehow he's intelligent, three. Neutral is four. If you think somehow he's unintelligent, you put five. He is unintelligent, six. He's very unintelligent, seven. If you think he's untrained, put a one. He's very untrained, put a one. If he's uh, untrained, put a two. He's somehow untrained, put a three. Neutral, four. Trained, Somehow, five. Trained, six. Very trained, seven. I hope you're getting an idea. And feel free to ask a question, uh, you know, uh, through WhatsApp. You can even send me email and ask a question. But I want, I request all of you to fill it. You'll get an extra point if you send back this ethos measurement scale. Bye for now. That is 7A, public speaking skill. It will be useless, the material, if you just keep it there. It will only be a, a, a useful to you. Read it, apply it. 
read it up i told you communication is both a theoretical and practical cause so practice your public speaking you don't wake up one morning and you're good in public speaking i've told you when you see those speakers they've practiced on it bye